The Lord be with you. Also with you. What a great joy it is to be gathered here in our Lord's house for his service to us by means of his very name, word, and body, and blood. And we give him thanks for, for gathering us here safely. And, and, uh, and yes, we are in the middle of fall, so uh, we should be experiencing the weather we are. And that's, uh, that's always encouraging. Um, we are in the last two weeks of the church year. This will be the second to last Sunday of the church year. Uh, with that in mind, the readings and uh, get a little darker, uh, a little bit more uh, perhaps apocalyptic in nature. So keep that in mind as you hear the hymns and as you are hearing the texts as well as the sermon. Uh, the service is printed for you here in your bulletin. You'll find that, and for those on Facebook, you'll find that in a previous post. And I pray our Lord's blessings be upon us as we begin with our hymn of invocation, Lord, to you I make confession. <laughs>
sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
You have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Dispel from us the works of darkness and grant us to live in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, that our faith may never be found wanting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the 24th Sunday after Pentecost is from Zephaniah chapter 1. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guests. And on the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the officials and the king's sons and all who array themselves in foreign attire. On that day, I will punish everyone who leaps over the threshold, and those who fill their master's house with violence and fraud. On that day, declares the Lord, a cry will be heard from the fish gate, a wail from the second quarter, a loud crash from the hills. Wail, O inhabitants of mortar, for all the traitors are no more, all who weigh out silver are cut off. All that time, at that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the men who are complacent, those who say in their hearts, The Lord will not do good, nor will he do ill. Their goods shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near. Near and hastening fast, the sound of the day of the Lord is bitter, the mighty man cries aloud there. A day of wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and de de devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blasts and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed the robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are those whose strength is in you in whose heart are the highways to Zion. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Well, people are saying, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. Trusted to them as property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went once, went at once, and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went, and dug in the ground, and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came, and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant! You knew that I reap where I have not sowed, and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who, is, who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who is not, even what he has will be taken away, and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again in glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I, the Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, 
whose faith by the prophets, and I believe one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world.
God called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, Jesus speaks of two different people in our parable of the talents today. The first two servants rejoice in the gifts given them by their master. In fact, they're honored at the very opportunity that he gives them. And they joyfully use their gifts and anxiously await their master's return. They aren't concerned with their master's expectation of a great return on his investment, but they rather are pleased to have him come to settle accounts. And they know that he will be well pleased with them. They are faithful servants. The third servant is different. From the moment he receives the gift, he dreads the master's return. He sees the gift not as an opportunity, but as an uncertainty and a burden. So when the master returns, this servant is not happy. He's consumed with doubt, for he does not know his master at all. Thinking of him as not kind and generous, but hard and unjust. He is not a faithful servant, but rather a fearful servant. So which of the two are you? How is it with you in your life? This is an important question, for as we see with these servants how it is with your life is a reflection of how it is with your faith. Whether we are faithful or fearful servants will be reflected in what we do with the gifts and talents that God gives given to us. And whether we are fearful or faithful will come from what we believe about our Heavenly Father. Is He a kind and gracious and loving God who gives to us for, for us to use and enjoy so that we might have the joy of, of giving back to Him from what He has already given to us? Or is He a hard, harsh, demanding God who gives to us only to obligate us and demand back from us. You see, what you believe of God makes the difference between living with confidence and joy or living in dread with your head and all the gifts He gives you buried in the sand. And so Jesus tells this parable not so much to teach us what we are to do, this isn't a sermon on stewardship. No. Jesus tells this parable for the same reason he tells all of his parables. To teach us of God. To reveal to us who he is and what he is doing. To teach us about our giving Father in heaven. So that in this time, the time that we live here before our Lord's return, we may live as God wills, and that is that we may be children of our Father, giving and living as He has done for us. Which means that the key for all of you to be faithful and not fearful is not for, for me to stand up here and, and tell you to be faithful and joyful to be like those first two servants and, and go out there and produce. No. The key is to know your master, to know your Father in heaven. For faith and joy come only when fear is taken away. When you know your Father in heaven, when you know that he is good and kind and gracious, then you are free to live in the same way. 
his good and faithful servants. So let us consider our Father in heaven. First, we confess in our confession, in our catechism, I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes and ears, and all my members my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and food, food and drink, house and home, wife, children, land, animals, and all that I have, and he richly and daily provides me with all I need to support this body and life. God gives. All that you have is from your Father in heaven. Everything. If he didn't give it, you wouldn't have it. All is gift for you to use and to enjoy. Now to some he gives more and to some less, just as in the parable. But this too is very good. He gives what he does because he knows you. Love does not treat everyone the same, but each person uniquely an individual. He gives you what you require for your own good. Never because you deserve it. All this he does out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me. Friends, it's all gift. Now I will tell you there are risks in trusting him. In fact, I'll tell you, it's much safer and shrewder to trust no one. Then you won't be disappointed when you are let down or betrayed. That is, in fact, what happened to God when, in the beginning, his children, Adam and Eve, betrayed his trust and traded all that he had given them for sin. When they believed Satan's lying words, that their master is a hard God, reaping where he did not sow and gathering where he did not scatter. And the result of them believing these lies was fear, not faith. And so it is with us who listen to Satan's lying words and so turn from faith to fear. When we listen to the lie that God has given others more, so he must love us less. When we listen to the lie that God is not good, but hard and demanding and unjust, when we listen to those lies, we doubt his word. We'd rather live in fear. And in fear, we then justify our sins by our own fallen reason. And its standards. For we know our sin. And if we do not repent and confess that the truth is not in us. But that is what when we find out even more about our giving God. When we confess. When we see how completely unworthy we are as we confess. He has redeemed me a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sin, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent sufferings and death, that I may be his own. You see, in response to our sin and all the mess that comes through it, our Father does not turn away from us but has given more to us. There's more. Because of our sin, the day of the Lord and his return changed. It changed from a day of joy and gladness to a day of doom and sadness. Adam and Eve hid from God. Remember? They hid in fear. They were afraid of God. And that day was a day like the prophet Zephaniah described a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds, a day of thickness, a day of 
trumpet blasts, battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. And it's that very same day that our fearful servant was expecting to come. But you see, rather than that day coming upon us, the Father poured that day out upon his Son on the cross. All the wrath, all the distress, all the ruin and devastation, all the darkness and gloom, all the anguish and weeping and gnashing of teeth that we deserve, Jesus took upon himself in your place, dying the death that was yours to die. He drank that cup of suffering and condemnation, all of it, right down to the dregs, that your sins would be forgiven, that your sin and betrayal not be held against you, that not you but your fear be banished, that the fortress of Satan be crushed, and you be set free to live in the joy set before you in Christ. That you know God, your Master, as He truly is, as, as God has been revealed through words of St. Paul earlier today. Has, God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. And friends, we do live with him. For the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. He daily and richly forgives me all my sins and the sins of all believers. And on the last day, he will raise me in all, all the dead and give eternal life to me and to all believers in Christ. And so you see, after creating and redeeming us, our Lord gives even more to us, giving us his Spirit, his Holy Spirit. And with that Holy Spirit, through the Word, comes the gift of faith, the forgiveness of sins and the life and, of, of, and the life of his resurrection. And it is all ours through holy baptism. And so as his children, in his church, we are now free again to live as he has desired us to live. Free to use all those talents our Lord has given us in the places that he's placed us. And know that. You are exactly where God wants you to be. And all the people he's put around you is for your own good. So that you might care and give and love and serve. To give as we have been so graciously given to. Because you see, we know who our Father is we know him through the work of his Son, as well as through the faith and guidance of the Holy Spirit that only will confess the work of his Son. We know that we can't possibly out-care or out-give or out-love or out-serve the one who gives us all things. And so we are free then to use his gifts in confidence and joy and living in such faith and joy now we will be like those first two servants, joyfully awaiting our Lord's return, knowing and trusting that He will be pleased with us. You see, without knowing our Master, without that faith in Him, there's only fear. You wonder why there's so much fear in this world. But that is not what our Lord wants. For anyone. That is not why he creates this, created this world. That is not why he gives us his gifts. That's not why he, he sent his son. And that's not why he continues to give to us still today. He gives so that we may live now. As we wait for Jesus' imminent return and forever in his peace when he does. 
And so right now, we are in this waiting. We are living, moving, and having our being in that in-between time in the parable, waiting for the Master to return. And it's right now that we have the honor and opportunity to use these gifts, forgiveness, life, and salvation, that are ours. That we would be like our Father, and our brothers and sisters, and our Lord, and our Savior. Really using and giving the gifts He has received, that we have received, whether they be many or, or few, whatever the case, that we live in confidence and joy, being like Him who is given to us. And that upon His return, our Lord Jesus' return, we will meet Him with the same faith that has kept us throughout this short life. Then we will enter into the eternal joy that we have already been given a taste of here. The joy that is ours as our Savior comes now to us in His Lord's in His Supper. As Jesus comes to us in His body and His gifts of forgiveness and faith that we need, we know His joy. And we rejoice when we are given the chance to share this treasure with our neighbors, our neighbors who are like us. Friends, the devil will not cease his attacks and his lies. His attempts to divide and cause doubt among us is plain to see. But know the truth that is found only in his word. Know and believe in your giving and loving God. And when he does return, hear those wonderful words that will be spoken to you as well. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Master. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus alone. Amen. We rise. In our prayers this morning, we remember those who have requested prayers as found in our bulletin, but I want to make note of a couple of additions. Um, did want to let you know that Esther, um, Bonnie, or Floyd's uh, mother, Esther, has uh, gone to be with our Lord as of last Sunday she died, and her funeral will be coming up this week. That information will be found in the Trinity Times. We also will keep uh, uh, friends and family of Denk, who is a close friend of Valerie, who's a friend of our church, in prayer as well. We will also ask God to be with Linda Mosby, who is Mosley, who is undergoing, going into hospice care, and we ask that God would keep her in the true faith as she endures these last few years, her days of her life, as well as for all those listed in our bulletin. So let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty, merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give thee thanks for all thy goodness and tender mercies, especially for the gift of thy dear Son and for the revelation of thy will and grace. And we beseech thee so to implant thy word in us, that in good and honest hearts we may keep it, and bring forth fruit by patient
continuance in well doing. Most heartily we beseech thee so to rule and govern thy church universal with all its pastors and ministers, that we may be preserved by the pure doctrine of thy saving word, whereby faith toward thee may be strengthened, charity increased in us for all mankind, and thy kingdom extended. Send forth labors into thy harvest, and sustain those whom thou hast sent, that the word of reconciliation may be proclaimed to all people, and the gospel preached in all the world. Grant also health and prosperity to all that are in authority, especially to the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of the state, and to all our judges and magistrates, and endue them with grace to rule after thy good pleasure, to the maintenance of righteousness, and to the hindrance and punishment of wickedness, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. May it please thee also to turn the hearts of our enemies and adversaries, that they may cease their enmity, and be inclined to walk with us in meekness and in peace. All who are in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity, especially those who are suffering for thy name's sake and for thy truth's sake, comfort, O God, with thy Holy Spirit that they may receive and acknowledge their afflictions as the manifestation of thy fatherly will. And although we have deserved thy righteous wrath and manifold punishments, yet we entreat thee, O most merciful Father, remember not the sins of our youth, nor our many transgressions, but out of thine unspeakable goodness, grace, and mercy, defend us from all harm and danger of body and soul. Preserve us from false and pernicious doctrines, from war and bloodshed, from plague and pestilence, from all calamity by fire and water, from hail and tempest, from failure of harvest and from famine, from anguish of heart and despair of thy mercy, and from an evil death. And in every time of trouble, show thyself a very present help, the Savior of all men, and especially of them that believe. Cause all needful fruits of the earth to prosper, that we may enjoy them in due season. Give success to the Christian training of the to all lawful occupations on land and sea, and to all pure arts and useful knowledge, and crown them with thy blessing. Receive, O God, our bodies and soul and all our talents, together with the offerings we bring before thee, for thou hast purchased us to be thine own, that we may live unto thee. We commend it to your hands, Christopher, as he continues to undergo chemo. Be with Julie as she continues to recover from a stroke. Be with the Thames family, as well as for Valerie and the friends and family of Bay, who mourn the death of their loved ones. Be with all those who are enduring COVID-19. Give them health and strength and faith in you. Be with those who continue to care for those folks with COVID-19. Give them the patience to trust in you as well. Be with all those who are struggling with their sin and mental illness. Be with Micah and Joel, as well as our members who are not able to be with us. Tommy, Mary, Dolores, Sarah, Randy, Del Maria, as well as for all of our members who, who are at home. These and whatsoever other things I would have us ask of thee, O God, grant unto us for the sake of thy innocence of the bitter sufferings of death of Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord and Savior, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The Lord be here with you. Father, ever thou hast been God, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and our archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. <laughs> Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed to pray, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take heed, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the very body of Christ, given unto death for you. Take and eat the body of Jesus, given unto death for you. Take and drink, just the true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of all your sins. Take and drink the blood of Jesus, shed for you. Take and drink the very blood of Jesus, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Now may this, the true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the very body of Christ, given unto death for you. Take and drink the very blood of Jesus Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Now may this, the true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen, preserve you in true faith to life everlasting. Heart and in peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us with the same in faith towards you and in further love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. <laughs> The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Bless me, the Lord, and hate me, the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.
as I mentioned, we've had, um, we'll have, there's two memorial service, one funeral plan. Um, Esther's uh, information is, uh, is going to be found on the website. Unfortunately, it wasn't up by the time I printed this, and it came up after I printed this. So, um, But I will tell you, it is Thursday at 3 p.m., and um, it will be streamed over the Internet. Um, this will be my first funeral streamed over the Internet. But the family will be together, but everything else will be streamed. So if you'd like to attend virtually, you're more than welcome to. And again, I encourage you just to perhaps look in the paper. There's going to be a link, I believe, or on the website for the funeral home for that. And then Valerie's uh, memorial service for uh, Dank will be held on Thursday as well. Visitations at 1, or excuse me, 10 to 1 with the service at 1, and that's going to be at Arlington uh, Chapel over in Greenfield. All the information for that is found here on the Trinity. Um, there will be an opportunity to help your brothers and sisters, sisters I should say in Christ, who are part of the outreach committee. They are creating these wonderful bags, reusable bags, to give to our brothers and sisters who may be in need. And then we can stuff them with all sorts of good things that they might need. And, and I encourage you to take a look at the uh, Trinity Times. You'll find uh, the guidance of those things that they're looking for, that you might be able to not only help create these bags, they're, they're sewing them over at the SOS Center, and then they're filling them here. So if you want to be a part in either part, uh, see Lydia. She's got all kinds of, of uh, material and things that they're, they're looking for. So reach out to her. She could, she's really looking forward to this being a wonderful opportunity to help our neighbors, especially in these times that are coming up. did want to make mention I'll be uh, driving to Michigan following this service today, heading over to get my father-in-law, who will be moving back to Wisconsin. He's lived his entire life in Michigan. So you can only imagine what his thoughts are moving to Wisconsin. So, now I told him there's beer, there's cheese, and there's brats. So he's excited. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, he does actually like the Green Bay Packers. After the way Michigan lost last night, he should be glad to come Thanks, Thanks, Pastor Hoffman. I'll make sure that everybody heard that on Facebook. I'm getting ripped. It's going to be a tough year. But. Anyway, our Lord's blessings and peace keep you in the weeks that lie ahead, and I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. I'll be back. God bless.